Hi everyone, today we're going to make a polymer clay St. Patrick's Day plant stick. I've been having a little trouble doing my videos, but let's get through it. Uh, we're not going to use a lot of stuff. You need a bamboo skewer or any kind of stick you want to use. I use a shamrock cookie cutter, which you can find those anywhere and they're not expensive and you can, of course, make your own shamrock, but this is much quicker and easier. And I did a fairly thick, I, uh, I would say at least a quarter inch thick on that. And here I'm just going to trim the rough edges, get the little extra stuff off that we don't need. And I apologize for the video quality. I was having some trouble with my lights. I'm a little trouble talking today, too. I don't know why. But anyway, this is a plant stick that you can put in with your little flower arrangement for St. Patrick's Day. Or you can even put it in by itself. Put it in the yard. Put it wherever. I've been having some problems doing the videos with not only my lights, but I've spoken about this before. The traffic right outside my window, it shakes the house, which shakes my tripod, which messes up the camera. I don't know what I can do about it, except go to my house out in the country, away from my brother's house. But I take care of him, so I have to stay here. Now, I put way, way too much clay on this, and you'll see that I trim a lot of it off. You don't have to put this much on. The one thing you do want to make sure when you put clay on a stick is make sure you get any air bubbles out. You don't want air bubbles in there. And you really don't need this much clay here. Um, you just need enough where you can put your uh, shamrocks on. Because you can actually paint the rest of your stick. I did not paint mine, but I was going to paint it green. Which I will eventually do. Which cuts down on the amount of clay you need. So you don't really need quite this much. And you want to have enough stick at the bottom where you can put it into the whatever you're sticking it into without the clay going in. Now here I'm just adding some extra clay, which is where I will put the shamrock. So the shamrock has something to hold on to. Have you ever wondered why a four-leaf clover is not called a four-leaf shamrock? I don't know. I'll have to look that up. That just popped into my head. Sorry. Now, I just want to position the shamrock so I can put the leprechaun's head on so that his nose is right on top of the shamrock. Now you can switch this up any way you want, you know, change it around, do whatever you want. There I am trimming. You 
see I'm trimming some of the clay away. I just have way too much on there. And you can actually even do this without all the clay at the bottom. Just paint it green. We're going to do our leprechaun head. And we're going to put them on the piece of skewer that's sticking out at the top. You know I do voiceover narration for for when I talk you through this. If I didn't do this, all you would hear would be cars in the background. You probably hear them now anyway, but I'm a little further from the window. I see I should have left a little bit more skewer sticking out of his head, but it's okay. See, I'm trying to position it because I want to get the nose just right. Because you, you want to have him kind of looking over the shamrock, and we're gonna we're going to put his hands on there too. And I'm kind of giving him orange hair. I know it's supposed to be more reddish, but you know, in all the pictures you see, they have the little orange beard and the the orange hair. We're not going to do the orange beard. You can if you want to, but I'm not. So I'm just making a lot of teardrop shapes and I will be adding them on as his hair. I know they look like little carrots on his head, don't they? I'm going to do his ears, which maybe I should have done those after I put the hat on. Well, that's his nose, but we'll be doing his ear next. See what I mean about, I, I want his nose right there because he's kind of peeking over the shamrock. And teardrop shape for his ears. I'm pretty sure leprechauns have pointy ears. Now we're going to fill in a little bit on the back. I know this uses a lot of green clay, doesn't it? But you want the back to look nice too. And that's where we're going to put the other shamrock. Now, you don't have to do this. You can just smooth out the back. But I kind of like putting the other shamrock on. But if you don't want to use that much clay, just smooth out the back.
Gosh, I hope you didn't hear that. My stomach was growling. I'm doing this like it's 7 in the morning. I have to get my brother off to dialysis at 6 in the morning. Then I will be picking him up at 11.30. But I haven't had breakfast yet or my cup of coffee. So, But what I'm doing here is I'm just smoothing out the seams. I'm actually sitting in my bed doing this narration. I've got the little dog on the bed with me and he's just squeezed up against me. Now we're going to do the hands. It's just kind of a fat teardrop shape. And you can position the hands anywhere you want to put them. To where it looks natural, like he could actually reach, you know. So the little dog, his name is Barney, and he's like a cross between a dachshund and a chihuahua. I don't know what he is, but he's he's little. He's about dachshund size. But he's been sneaking out the gate whenever I've been going somewhere. He's been sneaking out of the house. And we have a fenced-in yard. It's all fenced in. And the gate is right by the driveway. And I was going somewhere. And I looked down. And there he was, ready to jump into the car. And I'm like, no, no, no. So I have to be very careful lately to make sure he isn't escaping. He's very sneaky about it. He's my brother's dog, and whenever I pick up my brother at dialysis, he needs to go with me. It's important to him. All right, now we're just going to make a, a cube and put it on his head for his hat. Now, I don't like to leave him bald in the back, especially when I put hair in the front. So we just make a flat little piece of the orange and just texture it with the needle tool. I'm very upset about this going all fuzzy like that. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to do my videos at my house. This is this is not acceptable to me. So I have to get that set up. Now we're doing the hat band. Wait, that's not the hat band. We gotta do the hat band first. That's the brim of the hat. And you can make this whatever color you want, too. You don't have to make it yellow. But I kind of like the yellow. I hope you're all hearing me okay. I always worry about the microphone on this thing. Oh my gosh, there's my phone again. I forgot to turn off the... I always forget. I'm so sorry. Let me see who this is. Oh 
Well, that was uh, my brother's granddaughter. She's not going to her class today. I totally forgot about it that I have to take her at nine o'clock to her class. Well, good. She's not going. That's don't have to give her a ride. All right, I'm going to turn this off and you're going to hear the clicking. Sorry. Now I'm using an eyelet, which I used to call grommets, but it's an eyelet and I'm using that on his hat. Now you can also do this with the clay. If you don't have them, just you can make it square or round. You can use black clay or gold clay. Now we're doing the mouth with the needle tool and we're just doing one side of his mouth because the other side is kind of hidden. And of course, as always, blush before you bake. And I put blush on his cheeks, his nose, his ears, and a little bit on his hands. I think these little plant sticks are so much fun when you give someone a book, not a bouquet, but a plant and you stick them in there. It's, it's a nice little surprise. And this is fuzzy, but I'm making some gold coins to put at the bottom of the shamrock. And it's just little balls and squeeze them flat and add them on. A friend of mine suggested that I put some background music in, but to be honest, I'm not really sure how to do that, and I'm not really that good at picking music. The music choices I've made have been mm, questionable, to say the least, but of course, you have to deal with that copyright issue. And there he is. He's ready to go in the oven. And now we're painting him. Now, I've painted most of him already. I didn't think you wanted to see me painting the whole thing. The guys up in on top there, they are in another video where I do six pins. No, I do, excuse me, five pins and a little teddy bear sitting on a pot of gold. That is in a different video. And so if you're seeing this video first, that will be the next video to come out. And of course, you don't have to write that on there. You can write whatever you want on there. And I'm doing the basic, just regular letters, capital letters, and putting the dots on the ends, which is a nice little finishing touch. And please, if you've, get, if you've gotten this far, if you've watched this far, please like and subscribe. And now with his eyes, I am going to do it so that he's looking down. You can have him looking in any direction, but this one I kind of liked him looking down.
Now, the video I made with the six projects up on top, oh, that was a struggle. Let me tell you, the traffic was horrible outside and the camera kept going in and out because of the shaking. But we will muddle through it. And I just use acrylic paints. They're inexpensive. I don't put a shine or a finish on any of my ornaments or pins. I know some people have asked me what I use. But polymer clay does not need to have a sealer put on it. I gave him a few freckles. I used the needle tool to make the little dots for the freckles. Oh, there we go with the shaking. That really disappoints me because when I was filming at the back of the house, I never had issues with it because, of course, the traffic didn't affect the back of the house. And there he is, all done. And be sure to watch the other video when it comes out with the six projects. And of course, you paint him after he is baked. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Oh no, I put the wrong thing on there.